back, we back, we back like I never left it. But you know what it is. I'ma let Instagram do what it do. Let it send out the notifications. Let everybody know that I will be going live. So sit back, enjoy as I let this do what it do. And my special guest will be joining soon, but I'ma let Instagram start sending out its notifications build our audience before I sit down with this amazing guy and chop it up. Chop about the industry. Chop about finance. Chop about growth, mental health. This, everything that you guys are wanting to get from my platform. Hopefully, I've been delivering with every guest that I have brought to this platform. Everything that I'm doing. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I, lo I do love the feedback. I do love, I appreciate all my followers. I know I'm not 20K, 50K, 100K, but I truly am thankful for the people that have watched my platform, join in, share comments, um, share DMs with me, ask me about their my journey, obviously about you know the people that have been on my show to send them the videos, where they can go and watch the videos. You can watch the full version of this on my YouTube channel, which is the same talk your barber shit so you know welcome subscribe shoot it out let everybody know this is what it is but i see my boy on so i'm gonna send him the invitation to jump so we can jump right into this and get it going all right benny i'm ready when you are What's up, sir? What's up, G? How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing amazing, man. I, like I said, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been jumping on my platform. But I'm very honored to have you on my platform today so we can chop it up, share some knowledge, share some wisdom. You know, I know everybody has been tuning in to everything that you've been doing. And, you know, it's now it's my turn. So I have you on my platform, and now we about to talk that barber shit. I've been waiting for this. So let's get it going, man. Tell me how your day is going before I start asking you 20,000 questions. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> my day is going good, man. We had uh, – I woke up this morning, got some much-needed rest after a long weekend. Uh, it was it was a long weekend, man. But um, <laughs> you know what it is. I can't. <laughs> but but uh, anyway, woke up this morning, man. Went to church. We had a church event out there, so that was cool. Got to go out there and help some people and talk with some people. And then I came home and and here we are, man. Here I'm, we, ready. I'm ready. Here we are. Here we are. Let's get to it. So what I like to do first and foremost is to talk about <clears throat> the beginning layer of the journey to put you at where you at now because we see all the amazing things that you're doing now but we don't want to eliminate the hard work that got you to where you at now because sometimes we overshadow the things that you know help us and provide us and help us grow in life is the journey we try to eliminate the journey and just go straight to the success factor of everything and we forget about what it took the grind the hard work the dedication to get us there so tell me, like, what got you in this profession? Was this, you know, a family tradition? Was you just walking around one day and got tired of your barber messing up your hair? And you was like, man, it's time for me to do my stuff. Like, what what got you in the path <laughs> of saying that? I want to be a barber first before we talk about the other layer of what you're doing now. Yeah, so, um, man, I, growing up, we didn't we didn't have much money for, for haircuts, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was just always intrigued with, what a barbershop is and how that is and you know the from the the talk powder smelling the talk powder to uh hearing the the old school andis clippers that snap you know what i mean you said or the or you had the detachable blade you know what i mean you would hear the, that snap of the blade mm -hmm. anyway it was just cool to me when i seen that and it never left me like it never ever left me and and i would watch these barbers go to work and it was it was cool how they would just it was like their own art and 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 it was like some were so good at it they would just create art by just talking you know what i mean and didn't even realize it It just came so natural before you know you're like dang this dude just put out a dope masterpiece yeah so, 
so that never left me. And growing up, like I said, we didn't have much money for it. So I kind of got into cutting my own hair. Yeah. And and then before you know it, I started working two two jobs. I think like when I was 14, I, I really started to work two jobs. And I would make sure that I had money to go to the barber shop. Mm -hmm. And once I was in the shop, man, I, I never wanted to leave. I never ever wanted to leave. And it was it was cool. It was it was it felt safe. It was like I was hanging out with men. You know what I mean? As a right. kid, it was, it was, it was just this, it was the common denominator that no matter what color you were, no matter what uh, uh, demographic you lived in, no matter, it was a common denominator where everybody, that was your safe place. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's how I got into it, man. I would pay for my own haircuts and I would get a haircut on, let me see, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I would go every other day because I never wanted to look like I needed a haircut or I had a haircut. Right. So I always just wanted to stay fresh, man. And yeah. so uh, needless to say, that's how I got into it, man. And and as the years progressed, um, finally, you know, which we'll get into that, uh, we'll uncover that, but I, I opened up my own barbershop. But yeah, that's, that's, that's how it started, man. Wow. Pretty cool. I, it's funny that you say that, you know, just going to the shop and, you know, uh, around our era, it was a lot of more elderly guys. You know, you saw a couple young cats, but it was more more seasoned vets of yeah. barbers in there. And then you would see them like some would have like they coke coke in their hand while they cutting or they cigarette, and you know, you know just yeah, <laughs> and just like fine tuning some cuts, and you just be like, how you like you talking, drinking, cutting my hair at the same time, and I'm still walking out in there fresh. And, you know, for me, the journey was, you know, my dad used to cut my hair. And then after a while, you know, I used to come with him and, and show him, like, pictures and stuff. Or, you know, or we'd be watching a movie together. And I'd be like, Dad, I want that cut. Can you do that? And after a while, I, I, I could see the moment in his face when he was like, okay, it's time for me to take him to a barbershop. And yeah. then, you know, I, I transitioned and we went to the barbershop for a while. And then at the point when, you know, the prices started increasing, it was like, okay, so you got to do some, you some flowers around the house. Or you gotta get you a job to get them cuts that you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I went. My first haircut, I remember it clear, man. I was with my dad, yeah. and and to be real with you, check this out. True story, bro. When I went in, um, I don't know why I freaked out. I I mean, I flipped, and and they had to hold me down. They had to tie me down with neckties with my hands on the chair. Oh, wow. They had to tie my, 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 my feet, you know? Because back in the old days, either, you know, anybody else could hit you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like <laughs> it was not uncommon when you walk in the barbershop and somebody slaps you. Like, oh, right. You know, you, you're going to get that act right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so they, they tied me down, bro. Yeah. And and I was going crazy. I don't know why. I think it was like the whole buzz of the Clippers, some man coming at you with these shears and stuff. You know, I, I guess that's what freaked me yeah. out. But man, I'm telling you, like they legit had to tie me down. And what's crazy, G? After that, bro, yeah. didn't move. Yeah, I didn't move with soul, bro. You know, after that first one, I was like done. So I guess that maybe I became sensitive towards the kids on that. You know what I mean? So like anytime I see a parent trying to hold them down, like no, 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 oh, hey, yeah, yeah, leave him alone, leave him alone. It's traumatizing <laughs> for this kid. I know. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I agree with. It's funny now that you see a lot of of our barbers like oh, I don't cut kids here. I don't. I don't want to deal with that. You know, but I like you said bad parents. I understand. Like yeah, for me when I have kids. You know, sometimes the parents will be like, oh, I'm just going to sit I'm gonna sit in the chair. I'm going to sit on the, like, no, nah. I say, you got to get that separation where he can start getting comfortable with me. Yeah. And then, you know, while I'm sitting there, you know, sometimes he's going he gonna to look for that parent, whoever, mom or dad, and he moving his head. But, you know, you just got to make it more comfortable yeah. and you got to talk to him. And before you even put that blade, you like mm -hmm. put your finger on it and kind of rub it. And right. like, hey, this is what it's going to feel like. It, it, it's not going to hurt you. I wouldn't want to hurt myself, so I'm not going to hurt Back. you. You know, this, yeah. Yeah, like, I don't never see myself not saying I don't want to cut kids' hair. No, know? man, I, you know what? My first year of barbering, shout out to everybody on the live right now, man. I yeah, yeah. Some, I'm <laughs> quick and glad hey, if you see, if you see some stuff that you want to, like, you know, kind hey, of, you know, speak on, Luna, and, Luna. and anybody that's on here, if you got something that you want to talk about or you want us to answer, 
particularly you know my guests you know you know it got to be about barbara and anything else we, we gonna overlook it but we all we all try to answer those yeah. questions for you yeah shout, shout out to everybody man i see some some familiar names on there and stuff luna you know that's a, that's a guy who's uh he, he's coming right out of school i see quick on there my boy my boy quick over there doing his thing you know but anyway shout out to you guys man um uh, so my first year of barbering bro like legit first year i didn't even touch an adult yeah. no oh, one yeah. would let me touch them bro so like i never understood this is just me personally i never understood that i don't cut kids hair and stuff i'm like look that first year kids is what kept me fed you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> and, and so so like i would walk in to the point where i wouldn't even look at the adult i would just look at the kid and i'd be like hey man your boy need a cut <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the heck with you you're not gonna let me cut your hair anyway yeah. so um I, yeah man that first year dude i cut nothing but kids hair and and finally i'll never forget it one guy he would go in there every week bro and he would say um he goes hey man i see you just sitting down man you don't you know you ain't really cutting nobody's hair and i was like yeah i mean why well, you need to cut and he was like nah you ain't gonna cut mine but you can cut my son's hair and i was like dang <laughs> dog, i thought i had my i thought i had my breakout right there you know what i mean um needless to say i cut his son's hair and he was like oh bet bro i'm gonna um and you can you cut my hair and i was like yeah so that year had led up to that one cut you know what i mean it was like the olympics dun, 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 dun. it was like slow motion to clear i bring it out dun, 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 dun. i swear in my head bro it was like the olympics right there you know what i mean and i said i said ben you only got this one shot bro if you mess this dude up all of these other cats are watching me because nobody would let me cut their yeah. hair you know as far as an adult so man i i finished it up you know he got crispy whatever and and then after that that was my breakout bro yeah. and he was like man you gonna cut my hair every week and then everybody was like oh snap i didn't know you can cut stop lying i was cutting your son's hair you know how you cut you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, they just got they just got to see that first example of the, of the grown man head before yeah. they let that, you know. I get it. You know, it's funny that you speak on that because you know when I was working at my first shop on Merrill's, you know, when I came out of school and then um, the area that I was in was dominantly like straight hair. So I, I graduated to that where I was like I was cutting straight hair like more better than I was cutting coarse hair. So when I first got into a shop that was dominantly all, you know, our, our necessity and, and our, our culture and stuff like that, you know, I was, I was getting there, but I wasn't getting that, that fade and that blend the way that I wanted. So one particular guy from Atlanta came into the shop and he had tattoos all around his head. So the blend that he wanted was so crisp that, you know, you could see the definition and the fine yeah. print of like, you know, you can see the, the tattoos, but you also see the fade and blend going into it. So on my end, I thought I did an amazing job. I'm like, yeah, okay, I think I crushed this one. So, you know, I, I did what I did, gave him the mirror, turned him around. He was looking at it, but then it wasn't that, you know, that look where you get like somebody looking like, oh yeah, okay, you did. It was like, look like, okay. He, I'm, I'm like, okay, he, he about to ask me, uh, he about to ask me a question. So he hit me with that. Are you done? And I was like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I believe I'm done. <laughs> he was like, are you sure you done? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm done. Man, he started going off. Man, I don't know what you did. This blend ain't right. You, you didn't bring it up the way that. So he just going off. But the funny part, I was by the front door. You know, the newcomers got to be by the front door. So this person was walking by. And he was like, I guess he heard the conversation, but then he backed up. He was like, I don't really see anything wrong with the cut. It looks nice. I mean, I see what you tried to say, but I mean, he did a good job. Just let him finish it off. He's like, no, nah, man, he should have did it right the first time. So they going back and forth. So at that particular time, my other partner that I was in there uh, in the shop with, he had went out for a smoke break. So he came, like, I had to call, I had to call him on the phone. I was like, hey, man, come through. I need your help. He came back and then he looked at it. He was like, you know, I see where you try to go with this. He said, just come sit in my chair and I'll, I'll fix you up. So he did his job. He, my barber, you know, my boy hit him up, came back. But he was like, I still want to pay you for the service because you still did a service. But I, in my heart, I was like, no, I didn't give right. you what you want. I'm not right. going to take right. the money for something I didn't fully accomplish. Right. He was like, no, nah, man, you know, you, you did your thing, I, you know, but 
it was just certain things I'm particularly aware what I want on my cut. And I'm not saying you did a bit bad job. It just wasn't what I wanted. Right. He said, but I still want to pay you for the cut. And I was like, no, nah, man, I don't, want, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want to do that. I said, you can pay my man for, you know, fixing it. You can, you can even give him my portion. I said, but I don't want to take the cut. Yeah. Finish that conversation. I just want to say, was it ever a moment where you did something where you was like, oh, I don't know that this might not be, yes. you know, for me, you know? Yeah. Let's so, so when when I was coming up, and like, and I grew up around a lot of predominantly black people, yeah. you know what I mean, and 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 obviously a lot of Latinos. So yeah. we didn't we didn't really have like, I mean, we had straight hair, but it was it was different from from the white Caucasian <laughs> hair. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so so I remember one time, bro, I was in the shop, and this is for all you new barbers, man. I'm telling you, you're gonna get hit with something, and, and it is what it is, bro. Yeah. You know, you can't help it. Yeah. And and I walked in this shop, and this guy goes, uh, it, it's a Mexican cat, and he sits down just like this, right? He sits down, he's a straight militant style, yeah. you know what I mean? And so he sits down and then he he um he sits up straight and he goes, Hey man, uh, you ever cut a flat top? And I'm like, uh no and he goes well you are today oh okay. <laughs> and i was like oh i am and he goes yeah and i said all right i mean you know whatever and so dude i go in i start going in i was like he's like i want to i want to horseshoe flat top and i want the bangs short on top and i'm like a horseshoe flat top what the heck is this i never heard of that yeah dude i went in on his head and I'm not kidding you, man. And and I, I I cut him for like about almost two hours, bro. Two hours. And he didn't even move. He stayed like that the whole time for like two hours. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be horrible. This is gonna suck. This is gonna be bad. And it was, by the way, it was a horrible haircut. You know what I mean? And and the the owner came over and he was like, look, man, let me show you how to cut it. And so he taught me how to cut a flat top. And and the guy says, "Look, man, I'm still gonna pay you." And I was like, "You like, look, bro, no, I, you know, it, it could be better. I know it could be better." He said, "Well, if it can be better, then you can do it better." Yeah, and, yeah. And and that's exactly straight up. That's exactly how this guy got me into learning how to cut a flat tie. He went every single week, bro, for like two years straight. Every single week to get that same flat top, and he would give me the same tip and give me the same money every single week. Now I'm a flat top king. I can knock that stuff oh, out. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had to learn. But yeah, no, there was situations where uh, even when Whenever I was in barber school, mm -hmm. you know, I remember I was in barber school and there was a lot of black guys around and they were like, hey, man, some cat will walk up. He's like, yo, I want the, the guy that can fade the best. In uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, whatever. It ain't me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know it's not me. I don't care. You know, I'm, and so I just kind of yeah. sit back and watch him walk by me. Well, after so many reps. You know, I started to get pretty decent. Mm -hmm. And and then this guy comes in and he says, I'll never forget this one too. He walks in, he's like, Yo, I want the best, the best guy you got in here. And I go, Delion, come on. And and I'm there, I'm like, What's up, man? He goes, This guy wants a haircut from you. I'm like, Well, he's gotta wait. I got like six of them. You know what I mean? Because right. in barber school, what I was doing in barber school, I was homeless in barber school. Okay. So yeah, so what I would do is is I would tell the customer, Hey, look, if you want me to cut your hair, pay the school i think at that time they were charging like two dollars you know what i mean wow. i would say pay the school <laughs> that's right that's right and give me the five and then if you like it then come back and then i'll charge you 10 and you give the school their two dollars you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that's how i would make my money while i was i was sleeping in my truck so mm -hmm. so each client mattered to me even in barber school you know so i started cutting this guy's hair and they go, Delion, this cat wants you to cut his hair. I'm like, all right, bet. I'll get with you, bro. I got like five, six people. And he was like, this is the best you got in this school? And I just kind of looked at him like, I mean, I don't give, I don't care if you want to cut or not, bro. I got five <laughs> other ones to me. You know, I'm thinking about my head. And so he's like, nah, man, he ain't going to cut my hair, man. I want I want, so, I want, a brother to cut my hair. <laughs> I'm like, well, whatever. I don't care. You know, hair's hair to me. I don't care. He's like, go ahead, man. So he goes and sits in his other guy's chair, black dude's chair, right? Check this yeah. guy. Bro. This kid plugged him, dude. Like, plugged him hard. Like, bah, got him right there on the top. And I'm like, oh, snap. The instructor goes over there and he says, Delion. And I know these barber students can't relate to this, bro. Because 
because they were like, yo, Delion, do you think you can fix it? And, and I was like, uh, fix what? They said, the guy that, you know, that I told you to cut his hair, he, I said, oh, you want the one that went to the other guy? He was like, yeah. I was like, no, nah, I ain't fixing it. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I ain't putting my name on that. Hey, he didn't want to sit in my chair. I'm not gonna fix. I, I thought I was, you know, I was a little yeah. crazy then, you know. What I, mean? I got six people in line, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> so, so needless to say, uh, he walks over there to me, and he's like, "Say, say, uh, what did he say? Say, essay." This is <laughs> he told me in text. He goes, "Say, essay," and I looked up, you know, because I'm short. I looked up. I said, "What's up, man?" He goes, "Um, you gonna." fix me up man that clown over there messed up my hair and i said well i don't cut behind clowns <laughs> and, I told him that. <laughs> and i said if you want me to fix you, you got to come back next week needless to say that guy's still one of my clients to the day bro but oh, but wow. yeah, yeah you know what i mean i mean you just you know you're gonna have those people man and yeah, you're yeah. gonna be challenged yeah. and but, but that's part of the game though you know what i mean and and i think sometimes as an industry we, we get so focused on on social media and 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 all of these you know nothing against it at all yeah. nothing against you know yeah. en enhancements and fades because there's some dope barbers out there bro i mean just incredible talented barbers and yeah. Yeah. nothing against it but at the same time what about the ones that aren't as good yet or the ones that don't know how to do those enhancements or you know all of that stuff so so i think like that's why i spend a lot of time focusing on on the principles of, mm -hmm. of barbering and, and basics and, and business and because those principles man are what's going to help you build and grow you know yeah. what I mean and so yeah. but uh, yeah no there's been plenty of times where I was scared behind the chair dude and I was like oh no what am I going to do <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. now now I don't I don't care I don't matter now <laughs> I'm no, not going to you up <laughs> no that's dope I, I love um, that whole layout because I, I know for me in, in school I, I wasn't typically, I, I feel like the cut format of it wasn't there. Like the educational part, you know, just sitting there reading your book and kind of like watching videos of, you know, 360 Jeezy and all that stuff. They would play that throughout the day. And, you know, constantly our instructor would come by, tell us to pick out our book and then we'll go over certain details and stuff. But the cutting format with just reputation, like repetition of like people just walking in and you're trying to figure it out. You know, you had your certain barbers in there that really, you know, knew how to cut and to kind of would like help out other barbers and stuff like that. But as far as like a real layer structure of like how that, that I feel, I don't know, you know, I won't say like all institutes are like that, it depends on, you know, where you go, but I feel like the educational format, but like real structured teaching, like how to really cut all formats of hair is is, is really lacking. It's lacking. And you know what? I'll be the first to say it. I'll be the first to say it. Look at most school, schools haven't formally taught us how to cut most. Yeah, there you go, right yeah, there. Yeah. They took the words out of my mouth, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> because it's very disappointing as a shop owner yeah. because um, I have a lot of people DM me and they're like, bro, I can't find a good shop. And then I have a lot of barber or owners telling me like, man, I can't find good barbers. Right. Well, why? <laughs> what is the common denominator? The common denominator is the school. We all come from that same school. So, and I'll be the first to say it, schools are failing us big time, bro. Yeah. Schools are failing us like, like bad because in the school systems, for those who don't know, the school system is, it's a lick, man. It's a quick, it's a quick lick, bro. It really is. So it's like, hey, you can come in and I'm going to put you on, on government funding. And, and whether you stay or not, I'm going to get my 15000 <laughs> Right. <laughs> and then every two weeks, we're going to have an open enrollment yeah. with hopes that you do drop out because I'm still going to get paid. Yeah. And even if you don't, even if you do finish, it's only like the real actual education is like ten, twelve thousand. So I bust a lick on three thousand on off of you anyway. You know what right. I mean? So it's a quick hustle. So they're just like, "Yo, get your theory done. Make yep. sure you sit down and you pass this test." Mm -hmm. And here's the kit. Good luck. Yeah. That and that's what it felt like. You know what I mean? And I remember in barber school one time, my instructor told me this. He said, "Barbering this barber school is going to be. It, it's either going to be the best thing for you or the hardest thing in your life for you." And I'll never forget that. And then I was like, the best thing or the hardest thing for me, the hardest thing was going through the barber school. 
Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, that place is crazy, bro. Hey, check this out. Real yeah. talk. I'll share a story with you guys, man. This cat, one time, bro, <laughs> this was wild to me, bro. One time, uh, there's this cat. He had like a wad of, of money. He only had tens, fives, and ones. Okay. okay. Yeah. Ten, fives, and one. He didn't have no twenties. He didn't have no hundreds. He didn't have no fifties. He Ten, fives, and one, and he had a knot. Like when I tell you a knot, a knot. And I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this dude got a lot of bread on him. Well, of course, there's a lot of felons in there, convicted felons. Three strikes, you're out. You know, they're getting out. They're trying to get the license and whatnot. Well, come to find out, I'm getting ready to leave for lunch one day. Actually, I wasn't leaving for lunch. I didn't leave for lunch until I seen his activity. And he just kept looking around. And, you know, there's mirrors everywhere. So I learned how to use mirrors to look at people. You know what I'm saying? And, <clears throat> and he's paranoid, bro. He's paranoid. Hey, well, it's funny because I bet you some of these students are going to be like, oh, snap, I seen a guy like that too. <laughs> but check this out. He says, he goes, he goes, um, he starts looking around and I start looking around. I'm not even doing nothing, but I start looking around now. I'm like, man, what's going on? You know, and yeah. I'm looking everywhere. Well, check it out, bro. I was like, nah, something's about to go down, bro. So I got in, I got in line. There was a line for, to clock out to go to lunch. Mm -hmm. And right when I was, I clocked out and I went out through the door, bro, no kidding. Texas Rangers come in, bro. They kick in all the doors. They come down from the ceiling in the back on the roof. They, there's undercovers in there. They're pulling out guns, everybody on the ground. And I noticed in the mirror, this guy was two people behind me. Uh -huh. whenever, whenever I was clocking out, he was two people behind me. And I was like, oh, snap. I did, bro. I did. I got, I got in, in, my, in, my, in my truck. Uh -huh. And the thing was, is I had a background in construction. Uh -huh. Okay. So my background of construction, I dressed always with like a polo shirt uh -huh. with, with just some nice jeans, you know, because we were always in and out of meetings and I always had work boots. But... But I look, they always tell me that I look like an undercover cop. Oh, and, yeah. I, <laughs> and I was like, that's not good, bro. Don't say that in the school. Like, don't, you know what I mean? This is not yeah. good. In the school. So anyway, Texas Rangers come out. So these cats now, because I left when I left, they thought that I was part of the Rangers, wow. bro. Wow. And after that, forget about it. I had like this black cloud over my head the rest of the time in school. Yeah. So they didn't want to teach me. They didn't want to want me around. They didn't want, they legit, like I'm, I got in like three or four fights in barber school, bro, because they thought I was an undercover cop. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. So Texas is wild, bro. Texas is, Texas, <laughs> Texas is like a wild, wild yeah. west over here, bro. But, but my point is to all of that is that the schools, though, by the time I graduated barber college, when I enrolled, there was only like, I think like 100, 102 students. By the time I graduated, bro, they were up to like 450 students. They had open enrollment every two weeks. There's no way an instructor can handle those many people, you know, that many, that many classes and stuff. So, so still to the day, still to the day. I mean, they're just becoming a little bit more aware, but I don't think it's because of the barber school. Me personally, I think it's because videos like this and lives and YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and access to, to learning and having education. You know what I'm saying? But that there's a there's a lot of owners that are that are saddened and there's a lot of barbers that are saddened and they're very disappointed because when they get into your shop, especially like a shop that's that's moving and yeah. grooving, you know, like, yeah. um a shop that's that's a well oiled machine. It's hard, and they feel very intimidated to not want to cut hair in that shop because they feel like they're not ready. And that's what sucks, bro. That like for me, that sucks because I remember being that guy. Like, man, am I gonna be good enough? Am I not? And and most of the time, it's not that the barber's not talented or they can't catch on because barbering is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it is is because. They're just not taking the time. People are not taking the time with these guys and really teaching them. And so students get discouraged. You know what I mean? So <laughs> no, that's I my piece. I, I agree with you 100%. Because I, I know that, you know, you know, you can go to an establishment that nowadays, you know, you have a lot of shops that's like, you know, revamping itself or, or opening like new barbershops that's just opening up. So someone that's coming out of, a, you know, institute of school is not like, you know, really confident or structured a certain way, you know, they could be put on probation just by the way they move, you know, they're moving in, in the shop and go, okay, he's not catching on. Or, you know, I have a reputation that I, I want to put out here as far as my establishment of my, my shop. If he's not cutting and I'm getting a lot of complaints and 
people are not satisfied, I can't have him in my shop. So right. that can that can steer you away from like, damn, you know, I went to school, I did everything I had to do. Now I'm going to the shop and they tell me that they don't want me. Yeah. 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 You feel stuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I and I really feel bad for barbers like that are that are up and coming because yeah. you know, there's a lot of barbers. I mean, I went from construction into barbering. Yeah. And and I was self taught before I even got into the school. You know what I'm saying? So luckily I had somewhat of an experience, but most barbers, like, you know, they're practicing on their little cousin or yeah. their brother, <laughs> you know, and they're messing them up in the garage. You know how we do it, bro. You know what I mean? Like, let's be real. We we messed up everybody until we learn. You know what I'm saying? And so, <clears throat> but most people that aren't doing that, man, they, they, it's, it's hard for them, man. And, and, and I guess that's why, like, whenever I try to speak to people or I try to, um, you know, do a, a content or live, like I try to allow, I try to help people to, to understand, like, man, number one, I can relate. You know what I'm saying? I can relate. And number two, it wasn't always as good as it is with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's totally okay during your transition to, to not know how to cut hair or to not know business or to not know fades. And, like that's totally part yeah. of it. You know what I mean? So uh, I guess whenever I, I speak to people, I try to give them hope, you know what I mean? And, and let them know like, look, man, just because you're seeing this on Instagram, bro, not too long ago, I was, I was, I was with you guys, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, you know, I understand it, man. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it's rough. Um, Let's get, you know, let's jump into it. Yeah, like, you know, you, you have your own establishment. How long have you have, have your, your, you know, you've been in business as an owner before, you know, you transitioned from a barber to an owner. Like how did, how rapidly did that happen for you? So, when you say, okay, it's time for me to open up my own spot and, you know, do my, my do my own thing and, and teach the better format. If that was your mindset, like, you know, to give, you know, people like myself, cause you generally you want the crew that kind of have the same mindset as you have that ambition to keep growing and, you know, putting out good energy in the world. So when all this took place, what was that day when you sat down and you looked at that blueprint? It's like, this is what I want to do. So I was uh shout out to D'Angelo, man. That's, that's one of our barbers right here around the corner. <laughs> um, um, he, he's a shop owner. Great guy, man. Great guy. But, um, um, it started for me. I was in, in 2010, I graduated uh, barber school here in Texas, and and um, I was cutting hair, and then I went and started to work at a place called The Art of Shaving. The Art of Shaving was a higher-end scale type of barbering mm -hmm. that I didn't even know existed, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I went to The Art of Shaving, I was like, man, this is, this is, something, this is something that I can bring to the neighborhood. And I noticed the neighbor when I would get off of work from the art of shaving, I was cutting hair all night yeah. at at the house. You know what I mean? So I was like, if I can get that concept from like high end barbering in the neighborhood, but not in the hood, and I can be the middleman, I think I got something. You yeah. know what I mean? And and so I was around construction. I was around a lot of a lot of suits. I was around a lot of people that you know that that corporate America. You know what I'm saying? And and so I said, man, these people don't want to go in the hood, and the hood don't want to go over there where it's just that much money. You know what I mean? So I was like, if, if I can save the rich a little bit money, but I can upgrade the hood a little bit more for a little bit more money, then we can we can really roll this thing. So whenever I did that, bro, I had um it was 2010 when I graduated. I started cutting at the artist shaving, I think like at 2012, and then I became the regional trainer. And I was like, you know what? I can't do this no more at the artist shaving. There's too much demand on me in in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? So I quit on them and I went to the neighborhood and then I got married in 2013. And when I got married in 2013, I was like, dude, I don't want to do this construction stuff no more. I don't want to do it because I went back to construction because I had the, the children, you know what I mean? So I needed insurance. I needed all of this stuff. So I was like, man, let me go back in, in construction. But even in construction, every day I was cutting hair still. <clears throat> and so I said in 2017, I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to pull the trigger. And 2017, bro, is whenever I did it. So it took me like seven years from when I graduated high school to 2017 to really 
come up with the with that plan yeah. and that, execute it. Now, mind you, I didn't have money to execute it. I didn't have credit. I didn't have, I mean, I was homeless, so I had lost everything, you know what I mean? So whenever I got started in the, like, actually opening a barbershop, bro, I didn't get in with a business plan. So if you guys are listening and you want to open up a shop, I didn't have a business plan. I didn't have savings. I didn't have a, a capital for it. I didn't have credit. I didn't, I didn't have nothing. Okay. I, didn't, I had absolutely nothing, bro. I got in, I sold the landlord my resume, bro. My resume of, of construction. Yeah. I said, I said, look, this piece of paper is my life, literally, here. Yeah. And I gave it to him. And so he read over my resume. And luckily, I had a good resume. So what is the lesson that I'm trying to tell you guys is <laughs> if you're going to stick to something, stick with it. And give it your all and don't just walk out make sure that you actually learn something or you you grow for something like even if the guy if the owner of the shop right now may not be the best thing learn what not to do from that owner right. and and cut hair and make money anyway you know what i'm saying so so luckily my resume was was it was stable it looked very very stable and so he called me up and he was like come on man let's go and <clears throat> 2017 when i opened up bro it, it things just started happening started falling in place wouldn't with, with no money yeah. with with nothing bro i mean people like in the neighborhood found out i opened up a shop yeah. that's just the other thing if you're a new barber create a clientele while you're in school and those people will, will more than likely follow you if you know you want to cut hair in a specific area Go and cater to that area before you get out of school and build up that clientele. So that way, when you do go out of school, it's easier for the client and, and not hard for them to go and give you money. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's what I would do. I would say, man, I'm planning on cutting hair here. So I'm just going to start cutting hair and establishing the clientele in the area where I planned on cutting hair. And those, those people over the years, bro, when they found out I opened up the shop, they were giving me barber chairs. They were giving me uh, uh, money. They would just give me money. They would, and and so we used all of the things that were given to me to open up the shop, bro. And and uh, here's another thing for you guys: um, if if you're a beginning barber looking to open up a shop, you don't need all the best things in the world. And go and try to find you a barber shop that was already existing, so that way you don't have to spend a lot of money opening one up so but yeah it took it was about a seven year transition but that's whenever it really got started that's when barbering really like i had to start learning you know what i mean i had to start learning commission and booth rent and taxes and savings and and llc's s corp c corp yeah. dba's all, i mean you name it bro. i just had to start. and i was i was i'm gonna be honest with you guys on here and, and forgive me if i'm vulnerable but Bro, I was like, I was like legit naive. I was ignorant to to business, yeah. and and I was clueless. And then this is the part that sucked, though, right? And then I'll shut up. The no, part no. that sucked is I was Just like, keep going. <laughs> 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 I was like, I was thinking to myself, dang, when I got in business and it was mine, I remembered every job that I hated. And the guy that I hated on the job, which was the <laughs> which was the boss, I was like. Dang, this dude was trying to take me to school, man. This dude was trying to help me. And I'm like, no, you don't know. You know, nah, 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 hot headed, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh no. So you know what I did, bro? Everyone that I still had relationship with with those old bosses, I called them up and I was like, yo, bro, I'm starting my own business. I just wanted to tell you, man, I'm sorry for being an a-hole. You know what I mean? But bro, like I appreciate what you were telling me. And they were like, what? You starting a business, Vinny? Yeah. Bro, guess what they would do? They they came through one lady, like I called this guy up and I was like, yo, I'm sorry, man. Whatever. I apologize. And then and his wife called me up and she says, hey, what do you need help with? And I said, you know what? I'm not even going to lie. Remember this, barbers, a closed mouth don't get fed. You know what I'm saying? Yo, write your vision down and don't be afraid to share your vision with those people, man. I'm telling you. So she goes, what do you need help with, Vinny? And I was like, I'm not even going to lie to you. I need some lights. I need better lighting. Bro, the next day she said, do you have bids? I said, I got three bids already. And she was like, um, I need another. 
another tip. Stay proactive. Don't be reactive. If you know you want something, know how much it costs. Ask and call around and get three different quotes. Get bids. Always have the low, the medium, and the high. And more than likely, you're going to get that medium. I promise you, man. Mm -hmm. And so so when I gave her the bids, bro, they showed up the next day and wrote me a check for like $12,000. Boom, got all my lights for free, bro. Straight up. Straight up. So if you're a barber student, man, this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Don't take this live cheap, man. I'm telling you, this is like free game. And you can, like, anybody that reaches out to me, that's why I try my hardest to try to, you know, reach back to them and be like, look, man, if you need anything, if I can help you within my means, let, let me help you. Like, I'll give you some free game. I'll give you whatever that looks like. So that's how we got the shop started, bro. I was negative $200 in my bank account when I opened up my first bar, my barber shop, bro. And look straight up. Look at it now. Look at it. <laughs> now we're making over a million. Like I think this year we're closing our books. I think probably 1.6, 1.8 million this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? See, I love, I love everything that you spoke upon that steady, being proactive, knowing your lane, understanding, you know, the dilemmas that was in the beginning, but seeing the positive aspect of it now to reach out to people and say, hey, you know, I, under, I understand now. I didn't understand it in the beginning because I was still a little young minded. I was still, you know, active and but now I'm 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 on a another level. I'm I'm gradually growing myself to understand and look at life a little bit differently. And I just want to say thank you for what you showed me in a way that's helping me grow now. Um I also <laughs> like that <clears throat> you spoke on, you know, starting something and not fully understanding the the, the the round of the roundness of it but you you had something that you wanted to take in and you say okay i'm gonna grow with it you know i'm gonna go in i'm gonna put myself in it and i'm gonna gradually grow and, and understand each layer of it while i gradually keep growing That's right. um the barbershop when you said you know it was the uh, middle ground lower ground and i put myself in the medium so how was that for you knowing that you know you had a mindset, you worked for a barbershop that had a sudden layer. You wanted to take that layer, put it in your business, but you understood that, it, you know, it was a, a two outside layers of this business that could maybe either help grow it or dismiss it, dismiss it and, and bring it down. Because, you know, sometimes as barbers in our barber community, we can kind of be against each other in, in certain ways. So somebody can see what you're doing and try to, you know, dismantle that and, and put negative thoughts on that. How did you keep your mindset growing? Because in life, we always want to put the negative stuff out there first before we look at the positive. So how did you eliminate all the negative and keep your positive going? So, you know, that, and I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I know, again, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that are watching right now. There's a lot of people who want to go and do a live, and they got it inside of them but they're afraid what the man next to him is going to say. Correct. There's a lot of people that are great at that have a phenomenal business plan, but they're afraid of saying it or sharing it because they're afraid somebody else is going to take yeah. it. There's a lot of people who don't even realize right now that they're going to be great in the future because they're, they're not opening their mouth and speaking and asking for help. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> excuse me. it's a number of things. So what I did was, was I said, look, I, okay, when I was homeless, I'm like, I'm done. I mean, I, I'm at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm at the bottom. And guess who was with me at the bottom? Ooh. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody was with me at the yeah. bottom. So I'm like, okay, Ben. This, like, I would, I would literally talk to myself and I would say, Ben, look, this is it, bro. This is it. Mm -hmm. Your your best got you this. Yeah. So. Whatever you were doing, you need to change. It. Right. It has to change. Whatever it was, it didn't work. So yeah. it is what it is. Uh, granted, never mind the economy. You know, I'm talking about for my own personal decisions. So I said, look, that's it. You're never going to, you you know, you're not going to do this again. So you're at the bottom. The only way is up. And you hear people say that you're at the bottom. The only way is up. Well, literally, I was at the bottom. The only way is up. So when I looked around me, nobody was there with me other than God, you know, um, and and I keep God first now in everything that I do. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ, he's my Lord yeah. and Savior, bro. Yeah. And and I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. And I tell people everything that I'm helping and teaching, bro, is all biblical principles that I that I read. You know what I'm saying? And so I said, 
I said, look, this is the way it's going to go down. When I start to grow and learn, I don't care what anybody says. And, and still to this day, bro, I don't care what anybody says. I know my heart and I know what I'm doing and I'm focused on what Benny is doing and nothing else matters. And people would go over there to me and they would say, matter of fact, I got a barber with me. And he's like, man, Ben, when you first started this, bro, he's, he told me straight up. He's like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I thought you were dumb. Like, I thought you were crazy, the stuff you were saying. And I was like, really, bro? He was like, yeah. And I was like, well, I appreciate you telling me. Right. You know what I mean? He's like, that's cool. I mean, what am I going to do? Get mad at the guy because yeah. he's being honest? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> so I said, you know what? Man, that's cool. So people, I didn't care what they said. And I didn't care if there was other shops around me. I didn't care if there was other barbers around me, bro. Like, I would just listen. And if if they were just talking a bunch of noise, it was like, chew the meat, spit out the bone. You know what I mean? And it was like, man, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. But if they said something that I could relate to, that's common ground. Let's build off of what's common. You know what I'm saying? And so I would use other conversations that way. And if they were like, no, nah, man, you ain't going to be able to do this. You ain't going to be able to do that. I was like, why? Who says I can't? Like, who says I can't do that? You know what I mean? If you're watching the live, who said you can't be an owner? Who said you can't be a barber? Who said you can't be a millionaire? Who said you can't grow? Who said you can't learn? Who said you can't be on the live? Who said you can't be produce great content? Who said you can't do this? Like, somebody you don't know? You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, get out of here. You know what I mean? So so for me, I was like, no, nah, I, I, I'm not going down like that, bro. You're not going to get me like that. No, it's, it, because I was homeless. You know what I'm saying? And so as I started to grow my business, I started to see the ones that talk the most are the ones that watch you the most, too. Right. <laughs> let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Like, see, I don't get discouraged, bro, even to encourage you. Not that you're discouraged, but, like, I don't care if there's I, I only 11 it. people on. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you, like, I don't care if there's 11 or 9 or 50 or 100,000. I don't care, bro, because the ones that need to hear it, and if one person can walk away with something, they can change their life, then we did what we were supposed to, bro. Hey. Yeah. You know that's, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the first thing I said when I got on this line. I said, you know, I, I might not have... 20k 50k 100k but the direction and where this is going i know it's gonna help somebody in the long run that's and I, you know i always i laugh and i see the the little memes that's with um jay-z and they say if you take the 500k or sit down with them or would you just you know or you know either that conversation or you want that money and yep. you know i see his where he, he sat down he was like at, at the end of the day, I want you to take the money because the money can help you and, you know, you can use that to transition or build something. He said, because I've been giving you game and knowledge in my CDs for so many years. Crazy. So, like, this is what I'm doing. I'm giving out free game for all of the past years that I've been doing this, you know? So whoever watches this, watches you, watches whoever other guests that come on, at the end of the day, if somebody takes whatever they take out of this to help their business grow, to help them yeah. have a clientele, to help them have a bit me better mental structure, to help them, you know, be you know, more positive and, and, and understanding that, you know, family. At the end of the day, it's you, God, it's God, you, and then your family. And then your everything, family, that's and it, everything else comes and, and follows in, in that. So, you know. Like, like, like even shout out to Ricky, right? Yeah. Shouts out to Ricky. Even even Amanda, Courage by Amanda. <clears throat> so Ricky, Ricky used to go to the shop and sweep hair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and and now the dude's doing his own business, got his own content, and he even reached out and he was like, Bro, thank you so much, man. Even when I was in the shop, I was a knucklehead. He wasn't trying to, I mean, he I guess he was trying to be a barber, but it, it, during that time he was just like, Man, just come here and let me teach you some life lessons. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so now he he's starting his own business. Amanda, she she's a a, a chef. You know what I mean? And she cooks and she was like, yo, how do I do this? How do I do that? And and I would I would like literally teach her and tell her, look, try like this, try like that. Like it didn't matter, bro. Whoever wants the game, bro, like let's let's help each other. You know what I'm saying? And so as I started to grow my business, I just stopped caring more and more and more. And now before you know it, I mean Marv. You know, uh, first time I went live with Marv was my yeah. real first conversation yeah. with Marv, bro. Oh, so I don't even... did an amazing job. Thank you, bro. <laughs> bro I appreciate it. And shout out to you, too, man, even having this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, when you reached out, I was like, yo, let me, let me, um, 
um, let me jump on this, bro, because you know what I'm saying? If you help people and people who want to help you, bro, in the early stages, can you imagine what you can build together? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know who you know. You don't know who I know. We can make connections. Like, Marv, that's the beautiful thing that I appreciate about Marv is what he does is because he's like a hub right now. Yeah, yeah. And he'll just start grabbing and connecting and shooting. And, and it's like the airports. You know what I mean? Flights going in, <laughs> flights going out. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's, yeah. like, legit – there's – legit people that want to learn the game and want to grow and want to be a part of something and as long as you're able to to create that and 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 grow with that man then you attract what you are you know what i'm saying and <clears throat> as i continue to grow bro i started reaching out to people that that were like way out of my 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 pay scale way out of my league way out of like i was like look i just want some help bro and and that's when i linked up with john mosley popular nobody yeah, that's my dog, oh, man. John is John is John is my boy, man. Like for real, for real. That's that's my bro, man. Like and and with, he's my brother that I've always wanted from another mother. Bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you look at us, we we're like the complete opposite. Right. He's black. I'm brown. He's tall. I'm short. He's thin. I'm fat. Got, you know what I'm saying? The, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like we're the complete opposite. Like the only thing that we both got going right now is we're getting gray hair. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's, just like, that's the only common denominator. <laughs> Let me let me ask you this because um, I know you talked about it a little bit earlier. So let me ask you this: the dynamic of like really structuring your business and 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 elevating. I know we have so many different channels right now. So many people speaking of how to really elevate your barbershop, how to elevate your brand, your branding, how to elevate yourself as a barber, but also as someone that is an entrepreneur and, and you have so many different layers in this industry, like yourself, I know you said, you know, you it came from the, the world of like, you know, contracting and stuff like that. But now you can it, eventually, I, I know you, you're planting that seed into your businesses. But let me ask you this. How many business, uh, shops do you have right now? Is it just one or? It's, it's just okay. one. Uh, the one that I opened with, I wound up selling it. And and so now I only have one. Okay, so yep. now you could say you're a you know real estate man. You you have that layer now. So yep. for someone that's coming in and is having a hard time to really develop themselves in the barbershop, like you know they're there, they're there all day. There's really no walkings, walk-ins. Um, the barbershop is in a good location, but. Um, Maybe your price range for yourself is a little different. Maybe you got to keep fluctuating your prices up and down to, you know, generate, um, you know, your your clientele to keep building your clientele. What would you say to someone that you see at your barbershop that's like lacking with a lot of um, uh, getting clientele, but you see it in itself that he can really flourish and, and be something great? How would you tell him? What would what would be three key words that are, you know, layers that you would say, this is what help you, you know, to grow, continue to grow? So, so num number one, stay consistent. No matter what, stay consistent. If it's two people, then be so consistent with those two people whenever you do get them. Uh -huh. Stay consistent. Stay consistent with your schedule. Stay consistent with your cuts. Stay consistent with your service. Stay consistent. It's like no matter what, consistency is key in this business. I don't care what it is, bro. Stay consistent. Um, for an example, let's say you have um, in our barbershop, we open at 9 and we close at 8. And we open at 8 to 3 on, on Saturdays and that's it. Mm -hmm. 9 to 8, 8 to 3, that's it. Mm -hmm. Some people, they have... On Mondays, we're closed. Sundays, we're closed. Tuesdays, we come in at 11, and we leave at 3. Thursdays or Wednesday, we come in at, at 10 and leave at 7. On, on Thursday, we come in at noon, and we leave at 4. Like, all of these weird hours, bro, people are like, no. It's almost like, have you ever been to a restaurant, and you see a menu, and they got so many items, and you don't even know what to pick, you lose interest? Right. Same thing. Same thing. So stay consistent, right? Stay consistent with everything you're doing, number one. <clears throat> number two, um, man, keep keep your head down and grind. Keep your 
your head down and grind. It doesn't matter if if Jose beside you has been cutting for 50 years and you see his chair busy. You keep your focus <clears throat> on your chair and grind your chair, man. Learn your chair. Uh -huh. Learn your chair. Learn your clientele. Learn learn the demographic. Learn what people are doing. Read a book for once. My God, read a book. Please, people, read a book. I mean, it's <clears throat> you're not doing nothing anyway. Read a book for at least 20 minutes a day. Read, start with 20 minutes. Start with five pages. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One side is one, two, the other side, three, four. It's only like two and a half pages. Just read, or you can do five five whole pages. I don't care. Just read. Somebody please read. Oh, my gosh. We don't teach that enough. Number three, I would say stay creative. Find a creativity to work your business, man. If you're not consistent, okay, if you're not consistent, if you're not keeping your head down and staying in your lane and you lose creativity, bro, you're waiting for somebody else to do what you can do for yourself. And that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. No one is just going to give you the key like the way we're trying to help give out the key. Now, you have to remain in those things. So, again, consistency, keep your head down and grind, and then stay creative, bro. And, and if, if you can stay creative, like <clears throat> what I would do for an example is I would sit back and I would say, man, how come there's nothing but old men, like old senior citizens during the day? There's nothing but old senior citizens during the day that come into the barbershop. And I'm like, why? Why is it just old men? And, and how come they're not coming here? But when I would leave the hood, you know what I mean? Yeah. Quick, take care of it, bro. Um, yeah, that's, that's my dog right there. <laughs> yeah, bro, man, man Mike, Mike is mad, mad yeah. cool, bro. Yeah. Mike is just, man, him and I, we've been, we've been really vibing, bro, here recently, <laughs> dog, and, and it's been, it's been, that dude is phenomenal, bro. Like, he encourages yeah, me yeah. more than what I think, I think I encourage him to be doing. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, he, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we had went to, uh, um, in the shop, I noticed, I said, let me get out of the, the hood. And I just went up the road like 10 minutes, bro. Mm -hmm. And during the day, in another demographic area, a higher demographic, you had young men, 20, 30-year-olds walking around, and they were out during the day doing things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but how come they're not over here? Mm -hmm. Because that type of money don't want to go where that money is. <clears throat> so I had to get creative. <clears throat> And so what I would do, excuse me, my allergies are kicking me. Oh, no, no. What I did is is I got the, uh, what I would do is I would go to the, I, I would get creative and I was like, okay, the, the youngsters that got money and time, they always got the college shirts, they always got the nice jeans. And, and I was like, man, and they always had a cup of coffee. So I'm like, yo, their clothes are pressed and they got a cup of coffee. We'll go over there to the coffee joint and go to the cleaners and hand out some business cards. Mm -hmm. And I started to do that. But you know what happened, bro? Sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're not. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, those people, they didn't want to go to the hood. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But, so I had to get creative. And I was like, what can I do to get them to where I'm at? And it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. I had to go where they were at. You mm -hmm. feel me? And so I said, okay, I can cut senior citizens and kids. Or I can relocate and I can find a shop where I have to actually pick up my pants. I actually have to button up a shirt and smell good and not look like, you know, with the hat to the side and stuff. You know what I mean? I had to, if I want to make money and I know there's money there, then you have to adjust to get what it is that you want. Oh, yeah. If, if you wake up late, wake up earlier and go and get the money. If you're used to going into the shop late, get there earlier and go and get your money. If you're used to leaving early, stay later and do just get creative, find ways to get your money. So and that's what I did, bro. And, and, and because I stay creative, even still to the day, I stay creative, bro. Like my marketing that I do in my business, it's, 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 it's crazy, bro. And, and those people that join my mentorship, now they're seeing it and they're like, what the heck, bro? I save them a ton of money and I make them a lot yeah. of money because you that, get creative. Don't, don't miss the opportunity to put your link in there. If you have a link in there, you want to, yeah. you know, let people know. Yeah. But also, I like, I like where you, you go with this. Um, it's very educational for, to me as well, because, you know, I find myself in that same layer of like, um, 
you know, like I told you, I worked in, you know, Merrill's, which is in more of the higher end Hollywood area of um, you know, uh, my area. But then <clears throat> through everything with COVID and stuff like that and, um, you know, the snatch and grab moments <laughs> that was happening on Merrill's. Yeah, it was a lot. It brought me back to the area that I grew up in, which was Inglewood. So, you know, the barbershop that I was um, previously used to get my hair done there, I went back to the owner and we, you know, we're doing our thing over there. But the area of the plaza is more of a discount environment. Like everything is like general, like, you know, DDs, discount this, Planet Fitness and stuff like that. But <clears throat> for our, for our lady, here and how we structured our barbershop, you know, we we're based at um, price point of, you know, 55 and up and stuff like that. And a lot of people that are in that area don't want to pay that amount. So what would be your, your like your, I not want to say idea, but your, your uh, information on someone that's in the area that might be pricing themselves at a certain point because, you know, of what they deliver and how they deliver their, their service but they're in an the area that's, you know, very like say low income. How how do you feel like they should, you know, get off to that if they're not getting the, the clientele or say the base that you really want? So I mean, so so this is hard, right? That that's a fair question, but this is just a harsh truth. Okay. It's a harsh truth, man. And 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 if we're gonna talk about it, then we gotta be real. Yeah. Okay, we gotta be hundred percent real. Typically, what's happening is the person that's overpricing themselves for their demographic is because they're not making enough money anyway. Uh -huh. And so and so what happens is you try to get old boy to make you the the money that you are you are not being creative in getting. You try to put it on one person to pay you for the other three that you're not getting in your chair. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so what happens is now if you look at it from the consumer standpoint, right? And like this is the business side where where I mean you just put yourself always look at yourself, guys, as a consumer. How would you feel if you walked in and this coke, you know, this coke right here, you can go to the store and catch it for a buck twenty-five. Yeah. But I go into another store and it's it's hood. It's the most hood store with bars on it and everything. They're like, yo, that Coke's $7, bro. You're going to be like, what? $7? It's a dollar down the street. I don't care, but this is me. That's because you know you're not doing what you need to to get the, the people in the door. So you're putting it. It's not fair for you to hit me in the mouth on a $6 <laughs> Coke. You know what I mean? Wait, but, but, I'm going to let you continue that. But you know what's funny? that you say that because I just seen a meme just not too long ago and it said you can buy a, a bottle of water at this location for like you said a dollar something you can go on um I think it will say a plane and you play mm -hmm. you gotta pay six dollars or something you go to another location it might be seven it said you just gotta change your location that's it that's it bro yeah. that's it so so it, in a low low income area, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> I mean, let's be real. Let's be 100% honest, bro. In a low income area, there's a lot of barbershops. Mm -hmm. And because there's a lot of barbershops, you'll be like, yo, how much you going to charge me? Mm -hmm. Man, it's $55 for the whole gig. Nah, bro, I can go down the street and get it for 30 Well, go down the street then. Go get it for 30 there. <laughs> okay, so guess what? You go to, <laughs> you, why you mad, bro? Why you mad? Like, just... Yeah. Or adjust your price. Yeah. <clears throat> so you go to the thirty dollars joint. Mm -hmm. You're like, yo, bro, how much are you gonna charge me for the everything, man? It's gonna be thirty dollars. Man, I can go over there and get it for fifteen. Then why did you even waste my time <laughs> at the fifty and the thirty if you knew you only want to pay fifteen? Yeah. <clears throat> That's what happens, bro. And then typically what happens is, as I always share this, guys, and if you're listening, understand this. Yeah, that's a good point, Antonio. Understanding the market and what the market will accept. That that's huge is understanding your market. Do a study on your on your demographic area. That's what I've done. Mm -hmm. So what I say is, is is desperate money never makes money. Yeah. Desperate money will never make money. Yeah. And let me let me tell you this, bro. I'll peel it back even another layer. This is one thing that I always do. Whenever I have an interview, 
um, before it gets to me, they go, they got to send me a resume. Okay. You got to send me a resume. After the resume, you go to my manager. After the manager, you're going to go and do an actual, uh, like a, a, a practical, you know what I mean? Like a haircut. And then after that, then you're going to talk to me. Yeah. I and love that. So, yeah, I got, I come, I, so you got you <laughs> drop the questions in my head. So my next question, um, and I apologize hit, if I cut you off. Hit me. Hit um, me, hit me. So, like you said in, in the barbershop, we're not structured. Or I, I haven't seen because I'm not a barber owner. So, as far as like establishment of barbershop, I see that we're lacking a lot of like formula structure to keep, you know, the business to keep go growing and keep going. You know, you always see these barbershops opening and closing, opening and closing, different. Or you see one owner, and then another owner leave, and then they're trying to, you know, make that same location work. And then they don't make it work, and then you know, either eventually it closes. <clears throat> what is it that you feel are you seeing that we're lacking? Because then you have like super cuts, you have like all these um, general corporation of shops that have formulas that's based, and they keep it going, and they open multiple shops and all this other stuff. Why is it when it comes to us in the inner city that we can't capitalize the same way these other markets? So that that's a really good question. And and believe it or not, I get asked that a lot. And especially in the mentorship program, there's a lot of shop owners that are saying, bro, how come I can't break up this particular barrier? How come we're, we're like, we're stuck here? Well, <clears throat> I tell them is because you haven't educated yourself on business. Mm -hmm. There's you just haven't educated yourself. You you think you're trying to run a business off of the way you were you were the business was ran to you mm -hmm. as a barber. They don't work that way. And the number one thing that we do is we have an owner operator mindset rather than an ownership mindset. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to make a switch and I said, I can't look at you guys all the time as if we're just cutting hair and I'm trying to create this cool environment so you don't leave me because remember desperate money never makes money. So I had to turn off the desperate switch in my mind and say, I have to run this like a real business. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so I started to learn structure, resumes. I guarantee you, if you ask a barber right now, hey, do you have a resume? <laughs> More than 80% of them are going to be like, no, I don't have a resume. What do you need to know? Look at my IG. <laughs> I don't care about your Instagram. I want to know about your resume. Yeah. That's just a little yeah. bit. So whenever I started to implement things like a resume, and then I started to implement um, pay structures, pay scales, and I started, go ahead. <clears throat> so what, how would that work for a barber that doesn't, like, what is it that you look for on a resume? Like the question, because you know, we, is, do you want a barber that said, okay, I worked at this spot, then I worked at this spot, then I worked at this spot? Like, how do, what is it, because I know for me in the corporate world, what I put, you know, I didn't want to put so many different jobs. Like, I used to work a lot of retail. So when I went into the actual corporate part of it, I didn't want to put, like, okay, I worked at Best Buy, I worked at Circuit City, you know, I did all this. Like, I wanted to show that I, whatever I was going out for, that it lined up with that position that I wanted. So how would you look at a resume format of someone that you want to bring into your shop? So the first thing that I do, the reason why I'm asking you for a resume is I want to see if you got enough effort to even invest in yourself. Okay. So I, I peel that back before that layer, you know what I'm saying? So, so what I say is if you don't even have enough effort to put into yourself to tell me a little bit about you on paper, why in the hell would I invest in you to come into my shop and take my time, my money, my efforts, and expect for me to like this is going to be an exchange you know what i'm saying that's not a fair exchange so the resume once i look at your resume it lets me know okay you were you were smart enough but now they got ai you know what i'm saying <laughs> so, so now these ai geniuses all of a sudden you know what i mean have these dope resumes so then i look at timelines i look at timelines i want to know how long you were at a job i want to know what you were doing at that job and then i actually call up your your references uh -huh. I'm going to call your references, bro, because most of the time people are always going to put people who they know on a, on a resume. Uh -huh. Right. And so even then I have questions to ask around that to let me know if this dude's lying or not. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, hey, how long did y'all work together? And 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 you know, what kind of what kind of login system did you guys have whenever y'all were doing that? Because I'm not gonna have a new login system. So, what what would you do for like time cards or what? How did y'all? How did you log your information? Uh uh uh. Okay, no problem. Click line. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but if I didn't have these structures in place, my shop and like most owners, like you're saying, there's always that turnaround. And so you have to start to think, what, how am I going to protect my investment? And then you have to funnel that through uh, an ROI. What is the return on my investment? And how long is it going to take me to get that? So like, let's say if you, G, came to work for me, right? <clears throat> you came to work for me and, and you got through all of that stuff. I'm thinking now, okay, what's the return on this investment? because I'm gonna to have to give him uniforms. He's gonna be occupying my chair. He's gonna to have to be uh, coming in. I know he's got a family. I know his schedule is gonna fluctuate, all of these things. How long is it gonna take me to make some money off of the time that the chair has been empty? You see what I'm saying? So if that chair has been empty two months, I need you to produce two months worth of income that I lost before I even get into the green. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's how I run my business. And so I sit back and I'll say, okay, I'm going to invest in him. I'm going to get him his cars. I'm going to get him his uniform. I'm going to get put him on social media. I'm going to put him on the live. I'm going to get him on all of these things where people can book with him on, on the website, all of these things. I'm going to hook him up. And now I need to say, when am I going to get the return on my investment? I don't ride you. <clears throat> I'm not going to ride you. I'm not going to be like, you know, I'm not a micromanager. Me. So, so this, what is, I, this is not no uh, boo from rent type of establishment okay no. definitely wanted to put that out there because you I know i understand like shops that feel like they would only want to do booth rent they don't want to put in the time to um do anything that's like social media based they don't want to like market you they feel like you know the shop alone should be you know top party for you like whatever you need to do you should do it out of your own pocket but what if they're paying almost premium price for a chair and you like you you trying to make this you know this cut every every week, but yeah. then you, and I got to do everything else to market, but I'm also marketing in the shop. Yeah, see, it's a one way street. It's a one way street, right? Like like the the barber feels like man, I'm getting screwed on this one. So a commission based for me, what it does is it holds my feet to the fire. And it holds your feet to the fire. Mm -hmm. So if you and I are going to work together, my job is to get a return on my investment. So in order for me to get a return on my investment, I need to do my part and market my shop and market you. So this way people can come in and you can get me back in the green. Once you start making money like that with no clientele, with no experience or whatever the case may be, and you start seeing all of these other barbers around you working, and they're getting it and they're grinding, either you're going to catch up with us or you're going to get left behind. So more than likely, you're going to look, and if you're smart, a smart barber is going to say, hey, how can you help me, bro? What can I do better? Hey, man, Vinny likes it like this. Or, hey, you know what? We all sweet. Hey, get up and go and do this. Hey, you know, whatever that looks like, right? You're going to create a team. So because of that now, now what happens is, is now you start making money. So your job is to show up because in order for you to make money, you're going to have to be there. So when you show up and you make money, now I start to make money because I'm bringing in people in your chair. So commission-based, it holds your feet to the fire and it holds my feet to the fire. Now, booth rental mentality is, hey, you show up, you market your chair, you do what you got to do because I'm an owner-operator. I'm not an owner. I just need my $125, $200 so I can pay my rent and whatever my money comes in, all of my money's profit. Well, that's not fair because of everything that you just said. You don't market me. You don't produce. You don't, you don't, you know, the chair's not even good. The, the, you know, and that's why you have all of these different uh, prices. Remember, again, going back to consistency. That's why you have 50 different prices in a shop with, with three, four dudes in there. Like, well, why is he charging $65 and he's only <laughs> charging $25? You know, and now the $25 looking at you sideways and you're mad if you're charging the $65 at the cat that's 25 because he's cutting triple the hits. You know what I mean? There's no consistency. And so what business have you ever been to? I feel like, okay, it's like, okay, like, I, I love this because I also get that, that stigma of like, 
I'm not an employee. I'm a I'm a, I'm a barber that has my own barber license. I come to your shop, but you know I'm a I'm my own boss. So how do you? Where is that that type of vibe and and, and layer coming from? You know, like so is it is it more? Do you feel like does it fall in the category like for those that are doing booth rent and they'd be like, okay, well since you ain't marketing me and I'm just at your shop, you know, I'm gonna pay you this, but then yeah, I'm a I'm my own boss. I I come in here, I, I cut how many heads I want to cut, and then I leave and I do my own own thing. And is that the fall of our, our our business as far as like running a lucrative business in this barber industry? Is that the reason of the downfall, or is it because you know we just didn't have we uh, a lot of us wasn't business savvy to understand the structure of how supercuts and all these other layers of business are are running it, and now that we're trying to catch up, especially now with social media putting out all this information of how, you know, we can be lucrative business people in this industry. Is it like, is it funny? Like now it seems like we're trying to line up and catch up now. Yep. You, you answered your own question. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, bro. That's exactly what it is. Is we're not educated. Like I said, in the very beginning, you weren't educated. And then number two, people feel like they're, they're entitled. You are not, listen, when you come into my shop, you are not entitled to come under my umbrella and think you're going to run me. <clears throat> That's how I got robbed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Straight up. That's how I got robbed. Like, legit, I got robbed by a barber that, that felt like he was his own boss. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I get very passionate. Yeah, you can tell I sat up, right? Yeah, now. <laughs> I get, I get, I, I'm ready I get for very passionate. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm about to bring it now, bro, because because here, here's here's the nonsense with that. Yeah. I'm my own boss. Why? Because you wake up? <laughs> I'm my own boss. Why? Because you can leave when you, because you go home? You feel like you're your own boss? Okay, let me ask you. You're your own boss. Do people congratulate you and pay you for wiping your ass? No. <laughs> you're supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? You don't get an award and a bonus for brushing your teeth. You're supposed to do that. So when you show up to work, you're supposed to come to work, and you're supposed to work. And then when you leave, you're supposed to leave and go home. You don't get an award like, hey, atta boy, I'm glad you paid the rent this month. You're supposed to pay your rent. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Like, who... Who, who who entitled these fools to think like, yo, you're going to come in my shop? Again, ownership mindset, right? Let's talk ownership. If you walk into my shop, that is my barber shop. My name is on there. That's my escort. That's my EIN number. Those are my taxes. Those are everything in that shop is mine. You don't own that. Vinny owns that. When you walk in, guess what you want? You want a uniform that says Vinny's Barbershop. And because you want to come in here, that lets you know my shop is doing better than you as a barber. So if you come in, understand you're under my umbrella. My job is to help you, not control you. I'm not trying to control you. I'm trying to help you. But that's the mentality of people. They feel like, yo, you're trying to control me and this stuff. No, I'm not. I'm trying to help you. What your problem is, is that you're lazy. And because you don't want to be told what to do or how to do it or what to do to help you and grow in your future. Now you think I'm your enemy. And so barbers, what they've done is that I'm my own boss. No, you're not. You're not your own boss. You can't go anywhere. If you were your own boss, then you would have had your own shop. That's why the sweets come in. Now you got the whole sweet thing, right? Well, I'm my own boss. I'm going to go in my suite. Well, you go sit by yourself and go in whenever you want to and leave whenever oh, you want to. Let's see how much money you're going to make. It's been wars on this. Like, you, you stepping in a whole different pool right now. I'm, hey, hey. But, but you know 